as much as I wanted to put 100% in, I just couldn't. Yeah, it was, uh, I think I was definitely due for a win. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't even think um, I spoke to anyone for a good month. I was just, yeah, yeah I was very disheartened. I, it's all about the win at the end of the day. So yeah. it's moments in game and it's timing and it's just, you know, as soon as you have a crack at that double, just, just hit it. Hi guys, Luke Jones here back for Darts Mad and today I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by two-time PDC title winner Damon Hetter. Thank you for coming on Damon. Uh, no dramas mate, give me something to do eh? <laughs> um, obviously you're playing in Super Series 4 next week, Monday till Thursday, which I'm going to come to later on but I want to start um, where you really made a name for yourself in the 2019 Brisbane Darts Masters. Going into it, did, um, did you ever believe you would have done what you did? Probably probably not to win it. Um, that was uh, not really... To win my first game was a, a real big possibility and a real thing that I really had to like, put my chances on, just winning the first game. Uh, yeah to be honest. Um, and it was probably the game that I put the most pressure on. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you, if you watched it, there was just so many missed doubles. Uh, yeah. I was like, I was just really happy to get through that first game and then anything yeah. after that was a bonus. But um, I think, yeah, once I got rid of those nerves and all that pressure off the first game, I think I just relaxed and, and took everything as it came pretty much. Yeah. I will see you beat, you beat some big names and big-ish, <laughs> um, such as James Wade, Gary Anderson, Simon Whitlock, and then obviously Rob Cross, Rob Cross in the final. Um, that was to lift your first PDC title, and you were you wasn't even on the tour. Um, when that winning double went in, did you instantly think, oh, I, I can make a name for myself in this sport? I, it was probably the year before was when I decided to give it a full crack. Um, it, and yeah, it was just, um, yeah, it was like a, a big confidence boost to know that I did that. And I, I was doing things throughout that whole year that I, I really, I did put my mind to doing really good yeah. because I wanted, I wanted to get here. I wanted to do good things. Um, so to do that along the way just made, like, made it to say I was on the right path to where I wanted to be now, so to say. And I think a week before that, you won the uh, BDO tournament out in Australia as well. So that was a good week for you. Yeah, it was a, yeah, it was a big, it was a massive week to be fair. I was, um, I was just working so much as well. And I, and I, I thought that was going to put a little bit of a take away my game because yeah. I was working a, a decent amount and the traveling and, and I had to work so much schedule out because I was literally booked out a whole month for the darts, but yeah, I still had to travel for work backwards and forwards in between the darts. Um, as much as I wanted to put a hundred percent in, I, I just couldn't. So, um, yeah. I, I just took all my chances pretty much while I was there and, and I fancied myself in that uh, in the Australian Masters. I really did. I, um, I had to go through a qualifying stage back in, in Perth. Uh, I had to come through a field of like 80 players there. And then from there, I um, yeah, had to sort out all the stuff and get through yeah. like a group stage. I knew I could beat all the best in Australia and then, yeah, to, to get my chances and to play both um, like Jim Williams and Scott Mitchell, yeah. um, who I didn't really know at the time or, you, you know what I mean? Obviously, they're capable dart players and to get through that just, yeah, that was a big bonus in itself. I thought, yeah, that was the yeah. highlight of the week. <laughs> and uh, if, you, if people follow darts extensively, they could see that you was cleaning up on the Australian tour. You was the top dog and that's what got you into the PDC World Championships then to make your debut. Uh, what was, did you have any expectations going into it or was it just you, you've got this brilliant opportunity uh, so just enjoy it? Yeah, so that was the plan was to like my first time doing the whole circuit of the DPA and I really, yeah, that was my plan to top it. If I couldn't top it, or at least get second or something like that, then I, I might not have, have came, you know what I mean? That was yeah. uh, that was number one priority. It's um, because, yeah, if you can make it there and then, you know, you're small steps at a time. But yeah, um, yeah. yeah I, uh, I just, 
the the level that people like because I didn't win every tournament um, as you wouldn't um, yeah. and the level that the people were throwing against me just like helped like yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't I couldn't believe it I'm watching back now and I'm going I remember like what well, looking at the Australian circuit now um, obviously the the COVID has just put a dampen on things yeah. and, and like people are just going backwards a little bit with the standard but then yeah, when I look back, I'm like, man, you averaged like 95 against me. This dude averaged like 100 against me. I'm like, now look, they're not doing that at the moment and it's no. a bit disheartening. So um, I'm sure they'll pick it back up when once everything all goes good. But uh, yeah. yeah. So in now you're debuting the World Championship. Obviously, you beat Jose De Souza in round one, which is a good win considering what he's got to do since then. Um, you eventually went down to Glen Durant in Rome, but you must have been delighted with it. Well, with your first performance, first performance at Ali Party, and then that must have given you huge confidence then going into Kim's school. Yeah, for sure. Um, getting through that first round, oh, it was it, yeah, it was a new world for me. I, I've never <laughs> been to the to the Ali Pali. I've never seen a, probably a crowd like that. Um, yeah. I, I was I was sitting on a high. I, I came over early, like uh, November, yeah, to, or maybe the end of October, and and I just played in. I, I gave myself the best chance that I could um, to to play in all local comps and to get myself familiarized with everything and everyone um you know speaking to kyle uh just yeah. yeah i just really gave myself a good shot to to do it and to get that first win it felt like maybe i just uh, over jose i felt like maybe that was my game that i played uh yeah. as they say like that that was my finals and then yeah. so whatever else happened after that was just like a bonus i mean i was always going to give 100 percent um, just obviously, Duzzer was just, uh, you know, next level. He didn't even play a, 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 a game. He probably played a B game and he still beat yeah. me, you know what I mean? That's how good he, he was cranking. So, um, but now, yeah, I think uh, it would all be a different story on the next one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so what was the moment that made you think, right, I'm going to give Q School a go and I'm going to give it a real crack at becoming a, a professional dart player? Yeah, so it was 2018 uh, World Series um, and the wife was with, with me and we're just at the, the back of the, the room of the, uh, the World Series and I played Gary Anderson that year and it was only me, Gary, uh, Michael Smith and my wife and we we're just all sitting at the table like in the, in the practice room and um, just having, we literally talked for like two, two hours before, like we didn't even throw much darts before we went out there, <laughs> too busy talking about the darts and and how we could go about it and is it a really good thing and explained our situation and um yeah and, and it's been a it's been quite the road that's for sure yeah. at the moment um so but yeah it was, it was then that we, yeah, we decided you know what i'll give this it, all i had to do was meet all my requirements of what i needed to do so you know the dpa do well in the world series do well in all these other tournaments and then um yeah and then we'll make the and then we'll head over and and it wasn't only that it was it's it's to the financial and working and and working everything around that as well was uh, yeah, was a yeah. massive one because i still got i still got commitments back home you know what i mean so yeah um you you went to give school then um it, last year uh you reached the last 32 on day one and on day two you went all the way to the final, well, semi-finals, which was the last game you needed to win to get the automatic to a card. You went down to Bradley Brooks. Um, how hard is it coming so close to win an automatic to a card and then you've got to come back and do it all again on day three and day four? Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't, uh, I wasn't putting all my eggs in the one basket for winning one day. Yeah. Um, you know, what happens, happens. But uh, I just felt I was, I was playing, yeah, I was playing decent enough. Um, it, yeah, I had, I, had, I had patches, I think, as well. Um, I think I was maybe playing the player in that because yeah. it, it looked like whatever, whatever they were averaging, I was sort of averaging, but I was yeah. just had that edge of, you know, hitting the double or, you know, that winning edge type deal. Um, but come day three, all I, I knew that, I'd, you know, just start again, put in a solid effort. Um, and and I think I had I might have had enough points by day after day three anyway, um, and yeah, I think yeah. that took a lot of pressure off day four. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, but obviously it was a little bit disheartening knowing that you couldn't automatically go through because it's like, oh, now, you, yeah, you have to reset. And, yeah. and I think the best thing with like darts is you have to, you have to learn to forget quickly. Just yeah. forget that that's the, that's the, you don't dwell on, on things. You know what I mean? It, it's only going to bring you down. So, and I think that goes with a lot of dart players. Yeah. Um, then, then you reach the last 64 then on day three and four, but I, think you qualified you in fourth position on the order of merit um so as when you found out you'd won a card uh what was that feeling like oh it was a bit uh it was sort of like an up and down feeling it wasn't it was like yeah i got my card but it was like oh like now what like <laughs> it just like it didn't feel like like you got your card i don't know yeah. there was no, <laughs> Yeah, congratulations, mate, or you know what I mean? I didn't even get like a, I thought I'd get maybe like a little tour card or something, <laughs> like a little <laughs> bit of paper to say, yep, you're a professional player. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't, um, but like, yeah, I had the uh, couple of other Australian mates there, Gigi was there, and um, yeah. yeah, you know, we just went out for a little bit of a, a dinner and a couple of drinks, and uh, yeah, that was it. Um, yeah, it was all serious time after that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so then you get onto the tour then, and the early doors you was playing some really solid stuff, but you wasn't getting quite getting the results. You went down to players like MVG, Mensa Selovich, Johnny Creighton, Rob Cross. Um, did you think if I keep playing at this level, it is going to start to click? Yeah, for sure. I think you, you can't keep. Yeah, I, I think I, I did play. Yeah, half decent. Um, but they were just obviously they uh, they were primed, you know what I mean. Yeah. They know what it's about, and I was I was, I was still learning. I, you know, it was my first pro tours, and uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. It, it was very hard. I wanted to get off to a good start, but yeah. um, but in the same sense, I know I was still learning. I pro I'm, I probably missed a lot of chances as well. Um, yeah, yeah. Playing playing half decent, giving myself those chances. So I think. I think with this break, that COVID break after the first, after the eight tournaments, um, going home and realizing, um, yeah, just taking that step back and knowing, all right, that's what I have to do. This is what needs to go on. So um, when I went back home, I just, I, I spent a lot of time on the board, a lot of online games. Um, I tried to get, you know, some prep professionals involved in the online practice because they weren't really playing and getting some. You know, and I, and I think I just built myself up like that, and uh, my yeah, I, I my throw sort of sped up a bit as well over the yeah. over the break because I was playing online, and you find yourself just repetitively in a circle getting dizzy, like man, and and I think it helped, like uh, yeah, I I really think it helped uh, just getting myself some rhythm, and yeah, I think my approach is still the same, but uh, yeah, my throw is definitely a bit quicker, and they must have been a kind of blessing two months after winning the tour card, even though the world has come to a standstill and the darts have stopped, that you were able to go back to see your family. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it was, yeah. It, like we only left, uh, what was it? So we've been here, yeah, almost six months before we had to go back, which was great. Yeah, so I went home, sorted more things out. Um, great. Yeah, we definitely had a, a lot of dinners with our family and stuff. That was massive. And like, yeah, we're sort of like now because we don't have that option to go home. Like, yeah, we do have sort of an option, but it will just be like ridiculous expensive. Oh, then we would have to time it right. Quarantine. Yeah. Um, tickets would probably be cancelled. We wouldn't know if we'd get back. It's just so much factors involved. Um, so, yeah, I'm really waiting the day till it all opens up properly. Yeah, and in amongst all that, and the PDC did come up with the idea of the home tour. Um, how big, how thankful was you to be able to get that opportunity to play in? that home to well and um, when all the darts have come to a standstill, you're still able to play top level darts against these uh, fellow uh, tour card holders. Yeah, it was massive. I, um, yeah, I embraced it for sure. I, uh, like I said, I played online all the time and then, um, yeah, I, you know, I had to get up at 12 or whatever it was. And then I think we we're playing at like two, three in the morning 
And then by the time it finished, it was like five thirty in the morning or something like that. So yeah. <laughs> it was a, uh, it was a bit of a, like I was buzzing at the start anyway. Uh, and you could probably see that in my first game, I played really well. And then as the morning come a bit later, I was going down, down, down. Yeah. I couldn't do much about it. <laughs> Cause who throws darts at three in the morning? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, obviously you missed the summer series. Uh, you came back then at the autumn series. After losing to Jose de Souza in round one on day one, despite averaging 102. Um, then on day two, you scraped past Scott Wade 6 5 in round one, then came up against MVG in round two. After losing to him twice previous, how determined were you? Right, I'm, I'm going to get in this time. Yeah, it was. Uh, I think I was definitely due for a win. <laughs> yeah. But um, no, I think I just in in my head, all I thought about that whole weekend was was just just get the win. It's it's not how you, you know, like I said, I was playing good before, average wise and stuff. But it's definitely not. It's nothing to do with. Uh, I mean, it is a little bit to do with playing well in the average wise. You know, the ninety five to 100, 110. Oh, yeah. Um, but yet, if you're around that level and you're both like pretty much everyone sort of around that level, you. It's all about the win at the end of the day. So yeah. it's moments in game and it's timing. And it's just, you know, as soon as you have a crack at that double, just just hit it. No matter if you hit it with yeah. your third dart or your first dart, you know what I mean? You, you just hit it. You've, you've got to. Um, any chance that comes along. And that's all I thought that whole time was just, you know what, just get the win. Don't matter what sort of game it is. Every double counts. Um, I couldn't care if it was a 27 dart leg. I would, if I won it, I was I, I built, I built on confidence of winning that leg rather than, oh, I've just hit 27 darts. But you know, like I said, the legs are worth more than, you know, a, a nine darter. You'd rather get a, a leg, you know what I mean? Or, yeah. you know. You obviously yeah. then, you beat Michael Van Gerwen 6-4 with a 97.3 average. Um, after beating him, did you think I could go all the way? I beat the world number one. Um, what's stopping me now? Yeah, I probably wasn't thinking that. Um, I was, I was always, I think I was just like, all right, next game, like mm. just yep, focus up, next game, and I, I was really like, yeah, I, and I'm pretty sure when it started getting into those later stages, and I'm like, oh yeah, just got to play him, and then I'm like, who's next? And she's like, oh, and the, the wife was like, yeah, you're in the final, in the next one. <laughs> I'm like, oh, calm down. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it was, uh, yeah, I, like I said, I had some really scrappy games um, yeah. in that. But, uh, the, you know, I, I just felt that I kept my head in the game where I think when when the games were bad and we were scrapping it out, you had the other players that I played, I think they they sort of dropped their head knowing that there was a, it wasn't a great game. But, yeah. 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 Uh, after that, then you will produce wins over Demi van der Berg, Ross Smith, Martin Schindler and Stephen Bunton to set up a final meeting with Joe Cullen. Um, you won that eight four to lift your first PDC ranking title. How how rewarding was that after well, giving up your life in Australia really to chase your dream? Oh, it was massive. Yeah, it was really massive um, to get not to get off to the to the best of starts um, oh. leading into it and to miss out five tournaments. Um, not being able to get back for them, um, yeah. and then to come in and win one. Oh man, it was it was it was like a big uplift to go on. All right, I'm yeah, back, yeah. baby. Like you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, to do that, it just yeah, it just really yeah. I just felt you know what I can keep doing this. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I know my game. I know what I can do. Um, and, and yeah, and I really just fancy my chances against against anyone. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm the one. I'll put in. I put in time, effort, the whole works. You know what I mean? I, I'm literally given darts my my hundred percent. I I don't do anything else. I I, I got to go up my way to do things. Like, yeah. And if you know, if I was in a situation where I was. Like, like back home, um, say I lived like I could work here and stuff, I, I probably would have worked and still yeah. played that. I would have been like a Johnny Clayton, so to say. Yeah. <laughs> I, I still would have been like him for sure. Um, that's who I see myself as, as sort of like that. But, uh, but no, nah, yeah, it was a massive win. Um, and yeah, I'll be here for a few years, I dare say. That's uh, good to you.
Um, you reached another final then at the Winter Series where you you went down 8-6 to Gezi Price in the final. Uh, you had your chances in that final, but you must have been thrilled with the progress you was making in your first year on the tour. Yeah, I was I played really well too in that whole day yeah. and um, that whole that whole sort of series. I played really well. Um, yeah, to, I, and I did have my chances. I was like, all right, you know what I mean. I just thought I I really had it. Um, yeah, but uh, to to make the final, like you, you know, uh, making finals, making these yeah. semis and quarters. Oh, it's yeah, it's been great. I just feel I can just do it on a regular basis like yeah. I, that, that, that's where you know my i really put my expectations um to go you know to, to get a few wins every day every day and then and just you know what i mean if someone plays well against me and beats yeah. me and we're having a really good game you know it's, it's you just take your hat off to them but yeah. um i just feel i couldn't play a really consistent high level game all the time like that's my that's sort of like my goal to do is just yeah, get rid of that bad game that keeps costing me. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, I've been I've been chucking in some hours and uh, yeah. Um, and the thing was as well, I, I think I missed out on the on the Grand Prix by like five hundred or seven fifty. Um, and I think that was a, a little bit of a yeah. I went. I wasn't expecting to sort of get there anyway, but to yeah. be that close and miss out, yeah. it's just like oh no. <laughs> But uh, yeah, uh, hopefully I should be uh, I should be in the next one. Yeah, um, you did make your big breakthrough at the TV major in the in the Grand Slam, where you got through your group as a runner up to James Wade, and then you beat Devin Peterson ten seven to reach your last eight. Uh, you lost uh, an absolute classic really to James Wade sixteen thirteen. Even though you would have been bitterly disappointed with that coming so close to reaching your first. Uh, major semi-final you must have been thrilled with well, reaching your first tv quarter final and as i said it's just your first year on tour yeah for sure i felt oh, i felt really comfortable like we had so much darts on oh man i just yeah i was on top of the world i, I just really yeah I, I did play a really good game um throughout the throughout that whole month oh i just loved it i loved the whole the whole darts atmosphere, the whole, you know, the, the only thing to top it off would have been to have a crowd. You know what I mean? Yeah, that would have yeah. been massive, massive. Um, I thought, oh, yeah, yeah. So to, so to do it all behind closed doors, um, yeah, I, I just put a uh, decent, uh, I put my markers probably a little bit more further back that I have to reach. You know what I mean? That's, that's yeah. how I feel. Um, I should, uh, yeah, I, I definitely. I want to do better than last year for sure. Yeah, um, yeah. This, this, it felt like my first year was like a teaser yeah. to know where I can be, and yeah. So uh, I'm definitely. Uh, I'm on track at the moment. I'm just looking back and and from last year to this year. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm in front of last year. So you know what I mean. Yeah. I'm on the right track, and uh, yeah, and I can see myself going a bit deeper in all these bigger tournaments. Given your performances on the floor. Did playing behind closed doors suit you? Uh, yes and no. Yeah, I just I think I, I just like the environment there. I think like it, it's perfect world. So to, you know yeah. what I mean. I think it's yeah, it's just perfect world, and and there's really no excuse why you should be throwing bad darts unless yeah, yeah, you yeah. know yeah you've only got you sort of yourself to blame. But um. Nah, I think uh, the more I keep playing in these, say, the TV tournaments and stuff, yeah, yeah, the the, the better I'll, I'll be on them for sure. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure what happened at the world. I I think it, uh, stuff like that. I just put too much, way too much ex expectation and trying too hard and all that stuff. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm working through through stuff like that. Um, and if I've I've sort of yeah, sort of figured it out and. Yeah, I'll play. Yeah, I definitely. I'm just going to keep giving my hundred percent on the stage, and yeah, and just hope to play well. Really. In amongst all that, you got to make your uh, debut in the PDC World Cup of Darts with Simon Whitlock, your good friend. Uh, what was it like playing for your country in the PDC with, well, your your good friend? 
yeah, it was uh, it was a big honour, you know what I mean? Um, to not knowing that I was going to be in there, yeah, because uh, I thought Kyle was for sure. Um, so to get the call up and to, yeah, I think uh, Simon was a bit of a different animal when it comes to yeah. uh, playing for his country. That's for yeah. sure. He's uh, very very high spirited in that. Um, and yeah, I, I I sort of just thrived off it. Um, and yeah, we sort of just worked together as a as a team. He uh, I really was uh, worried about what, you know, because he was leading the way. I really, yeah, wanted him to just play really well, put that yeah. foot down and then, you, you know what I mean? And I'll just follow it up and back it up and how I was playing. Um, yeah, I was just, I was just really keen to be there and to, and I mean, I know that we, we had Ireland first game and they were runner up the year before. Yeah, so yeah. We, we were like, all right, let's just stick to, what we done, I, I went down to his place for a practice, like uh, just to get that team camaraderie yeah. going, um, know each other's game. And uh, and I think that helped a bit um, and it, because it's so cutthroat that first round. It's yeah. like first of four and that's it, you know, four legs and you're going home if you, if you don't get yeah. one. But uh, definitely, yeah, as soon as we got over that first game, that like it, it just felt like a little bit of weight off knowing this is it, like we can we can really go all the way here who's to say like they're gonna like anyone can beat us and um yeah and we just got really really unlucky against wales i think oh yeah. couldn't believe it <laughs> yeah um i i can't say i was too disappointed with you going down to wales because i was the i'm from wales <laughs> but um given that wales went on to win it and i well i could repeat that all day um it must have been pleasing that you you did actually push them all the way, um, and obviously they became world champions. But you pushed them all the way. Yeah, for sure. Um, they were they were really up for the task the whole yeah. tournament. I think they you know they were the favourites as well. So for us to even like you know we had a sniff at it. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think yeah we'll be uh, we'll be definitely stronger in the in the next one. So uh, probably look out. <laughs> Um, you made your second appearance at the World's End in December. This time you lost in round one to Danny Bargish, 3-2. Um, given the year that you had, how disappointing was that? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, oh, man, I just wanted to... I was looking for flights home, to be fair. <laughs> oh, man, I was just... Uh, yeah, I, uh, I don't even think... Um, I uh, spoke to anyone for a good month. I was just, yeah, yeah I was very disheartened. I, to go out the way, I just I just didn't start well. I, was, I think I just, yeah, like I said, way too much expectation. Uh, tried way too hard. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then finally when I started throwing some darts, I, it just, yeah, once I was, I think it was, yeah, two nil down and I've just gone, uh, look, throw your darts, just whatever. And then, they started coming good and I started coming back and believing again. And uh, and I think once it come down to the to the last sort of set, I uh, probably went back to trying and do all that. And I just, why did you do this? <laughs> yeah, I think because there was a little bit of hype about, because uh, of the draws, I think it, it sort of worked out that, um, you, you know, it was like a, uh, I think our draw, who was, I think Gary was in our draw as well. And you didn't know, and, and he got, um, he really got through to the final. So yeah, yeah. I, I think, he, you know, there was like a, 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 whoever in that, it was like a medium group of players that could play to the, sort of the same level. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think the, the, there was a lot of people that fancied my chances and, and I think they were telling me and I probably just read too far into it and put my expectations too much and tried too hard and, uh, yeah, well, <laughs> you live and you learn. <laughs> well, you found you found that pretty well, Roma. We've had three Super Series events so far this year. You reached the, another final in Super Series one. I think it was on the final day, uh, where you beat some well huge names in the sport. You beat RVB, Mervyn King, Peter Wright, Dirk Van Dijvenboord, Michael Van Gerwen, and then you came up against Johnny Creighton, where you went down eight six in the final again. You had your chances in that one, um, but you must see in the names you've beaten on that day. You, you, well, your confidence must have been through the roof. Yeah, I was. Uh, I was. I think I was really stoked that I beat. Um, 
Yeah, I just I, I come through Merv King uh, in a in a he came back again and I'm like oh great here we go, but uh, yeah I played I played a really steady day and uh, to play like even Barney I, and I said oh I never thought I would ever get a chance to play Barney because yeah, he's yeah. retired before I've come yeah, on the yeah. scene <laughs> so. Yeah, to play him, uh, to get the win over him, um, Peter Wright. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, yeah, I, I, I did. I played a, a really good day. And like you said, I never took my chances in that final when I had a few chances. I, I think I could have been like 5-2 up at one stage. Um, and then I missed uh, late again. And um, yeah, but uh, fair play to Johnny. He played he like he probably played really well. He made three yeah. finals that. He was that a different week, you know I mean? week, he? Yeah, just he's just solid. He's just playing so solid. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's all part and parcel. And um, if I keep doing this all the time, you know what I mean. I uh, keep making the final. I'm sure to win a few more than I would lose. Hopefully, you were. Uh... You made a couple of last 16s in Super Series 2 and then a last 8 in Super Series 3. Is it fair to assume you like these blocks of tournaments where you've got four, uh, you've got four tournaments like back-to-back -back in one block? Oh, I guarantee, yeah, I love it. Um, I just, yeah, I, I, I love it better than the uh, the two-day, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah. It just seems like it's it's all over and... Then you have to wait probably two weeks or whatever yeah. it is before the next one, and you have to go away and think about two losses that you just had in the first round, and yeah. it just—I mean, it makes you try really hard practicing, but yeah, you just with these four blocks, you got—you know what I mean? You you don't expect to lose first round like it does happen. Don't get me wrong, yeah. but um, but you've got chances every day to to put things right or. Yeah, it just yeah, you might not play well at the start, but you you know you finish strong and then you 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 boost them with confidence. Um, I, I, yeah, I just really like it. Uh, we 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 do play back in Australia. That you know, there's a lot of um, a few tournaments there. Like uh, when you go away for say like Australian uh, nationals and stuff like that. You know, you play four days on the trot, or you play, you know, three to four tournaments a weekend even. Um, so yeah. I think I've I, I like it better than the two day for sure. Well, obviously we got Super Series four now um, coming up on Monday. What are your goals going into this Super Series, and obviously going forward for the rest of the year as well? Yeah, just getting through my first rounds is uh is always the first goal. You know what I mean? Because yeah, you don't know who you're going to get. Um, it, and I, yeah, that's that's it. Just get through my first game, and then whatever happens after that is, um, yeah, is all on me. Just one game at a time. So uh, yeah, I, definitely, I'd love to win at least one. That would be massive. Um, but yeah, if I keep playing my steady high game, um, yeah, I just take every game as it comes. But uh, through the year, I just want to, I just want to be obviously involved in every in every yeah. TV tournament um, and. And not only just to be involved is to get, you know, start getting these results on the yeah, board and yeah. start, you know, getting up this ladder a bit because uh, there's a there's a decent gap between certain stages in the rankings. You know what I mean? So, and the only way I can see getting through that is, is yeah, is doing well in these big tournaments. It's yeah, just, yeah. You, know, you know, getting further on, quarterfinals, semifinals, you know, finals, just, yeah, it's the only way I think you can sort of break into, into those bigger, uh, higher rankings. And you've showed at the Grand Slam that you are capable of doing big things on TV and you can compete against these big boys. Yeah, for sure. Um, obviously, I had a few missed opportunities, uh, especially I, I feel that the uh, the Players' Championship, that was a missed opportunity as well, being 7-2 or whatever it was up. Um, yeah, that was. A, I feel that was a big missed opportunity. Yeah. Uh, I mean, not to take any way anything away from Merv, he, he stepped his game up where I uh, where I still plateaued at, at sort of, you know, uh, ninety seven or ninety eight average or whatever it was. I just stayed there and Merv stepped up and and yeah, fair play. I, I missed a couple of chances as well, but uh, it's definitely yeah, it, it probably cost me. Knowing now, looking at it, you know what I mean. It was a big missed opportunity, but then in the same sense, um, to get there for myself in my first year. Um, yeah, yeah, I take it as a big positive and a, and a big learning curve. So, 
I'm going to end on now on one question that I ask all my first time guests. Um, going from number five to number one, who's your top five greatest players of all time? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, uh, oh, man, yeah. I, I don't know if I can put them in order or anything, but... Uh, oh, five, yeah. Any five is fine. Yeah, I think, uh, well, obviously, Phil Taylor, just yeah. unbe unbelievable. Yeah. Um, MVG, yeah, crazy good. Um, man, who, uh, yeah, yeah, Barney, obviously, yeah. Yeah. He's there. Yeah. Um, see, I don't really know much of old players, so, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So I think most people would say like a Bristow, but uh, I, don't, I don't even know. I've never really watched in anything, so I could I can't say. Um, oh man, <laughs> I'd probably guess he price at the moment. <laughs> I'll give you a hand, maybe Gary Anderson. Yeah, for sure, Gary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, he was probably the. Yeah, like I said, he was probably the only one uh, that I. Yeah, that I sort of liked with his throw, and oh, uh, yeah. and he was just like the underdog to like Phil Taylor. That's how I felt watching. He was like, yeah, even though he, you know he was a big time player, but um, yeah. I just felt he when he yeah stepped up his game and it was just fluent, quick throwing, one eighty. You know, he put a show on, and uh, yeah, definitely a crowd favorite, isn't he? Oh yeah. Um, well, thank you very much for joining us, Damon. It's been a massive pleasure speaking to you. Um, I want to wish you all the best going into the upcoming Super Series and then uh, you go one in July then as well. And obviously, I just want you to do well for the rest of the year and um, keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, cheers, mate. Thanks. Cheers for having me. No problem at all. Thank you very much. Cheers, mate. Thanks for that.